the last stream, we finally began working on upgrading our armor, and we now finally have the full suit of mecha armor from Mechanism. Uh, the only piece that we're currently not wearing is the mecha suit body armor here. The reason for that is that we're currently still using our steel jetpack for flight, but hopefully what we're going to do in today's episode is craft up the angel ring from the angel ring mod. This guy goes into the angel ring slot in here, which I think is one of these two slots, and essentially gives us creative mode flight without the need for power and without the need to wear a jetpack, thus freeing up the body slot here for the modular body armor and thus completing the set and giving us uh, maximum protection. So in the last stream, we did set up this armor and we also began putting a few upgrades into the armor using the modification station. Now, between streams, what I've gone ahead and done is I've continued to make HDPE sheets, so we have those, and I've also continued to make polonium. Now, we did run into a little bit of an issue a few days ago, and that issue is that I left the fission reactor on for too long. So I left the reactor on, all six of my radioactive waste barrels filled up, and so when I came back onto the server a few days ago, there was radiation in an eight by eight chunk area around these uh, these barrels here, which of course was less than ideal. Now, thankfully, that radiation has gone away. Um, according to the Twitch chat, it takes a couple of Minecraft weeks, which is not too long. Uh, a Minecraft week is about two hours. This area, thankfully, is chunk loaded, as you can see here. And so uh, because it's chunk loaded, it's on all the time, 24 hours a day. And so in the last few days, the radiation has thankfully gone away, which is good. Uh, if the radiation hadn't have gone away, it wouldn't have been a huge deal. Um, all you can do if the radiation does appear is you can make a hazmat suit that is going to allow you to walk inside of the radioactive area without taking damage. And then um, if you want, you can actually make an upgrade for the mecha suit armor, which gives you protection from radiation as well. So well, we might go ahead and install that radioactive protection just in case. And um, we do have another incident like that where the radioactive waste barrels fill up. And uh, of course, when they fill up and when the internal buffer here fills up, the excess radioactive waste just leaks out and causes radiation everywhere, which is, of course, not great. Either way, that's not what I want to work on right now. What I want to work on right now is I want to grab these uh, polonium pellets that I've been making, and I want to look at making some of uh, these unit upgrades on the left here. Specifically, I would like to work on the attack amplification units and the hydraulic propulsion units. These are going to allow us to both step and jump higher, and the attack amplification unit is going to make our mecha tool deal more damage, which is going to be very important today because one of the things that we are going to have to do if we're going to get the angel ring is head on through into the end and fight the end dragon. So hopefully the attack amplification upgrades are going to help us with that. And according to the tool tip there, I can put up to four of these uh, into the mecha tool. So let's see if we can't make one, two, three, and four of those. Drop them all into the mecha tool like so. While we wait for that, let's see if we can't make four of these hydraulic propulsion units. These are a little bit more expensive. They do require these free runners, which thankfully are also fairly easy to make, actually. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Beautiful. Let's put those into, I believe, the pants. And by pants, I mean boots. Okay, so the Twitch chat has informed me that there is a option here in the controls, the module tweaker. Um, I've set that to numpad one. If you configure that, it opens up this menu here, which lets you configure all of your armor pieces without having to individually set uh, like hotkeys for all of the different pieces individually. So for example, the boots here, we have the hydraulic propulsion units. Uh, these are enabled. The jump boost can be set real high. And also the step assist can also be set high. Um, I believe that's gonna allow us to go up at least two blocks. So now if we walk forward, we might just be able to walk straight up onto that alloy kill without jumping, which is pretty crazy. Uh, the jumping by default is not super high. Like you can't jump crazy high. Um, for that, you have to press left control and then jump. And you'll see that we have set ours maybe just a little bit too high. I think five <laughs> might be too much. We maybe want to bring that down just a smidge, maybe to like one. Yeah, that's still quite high but that's probably a more reasonable high than the five. Five was maybe like a little crazy high. And then I guess as for the mecha tool here, attack damage amplification, 
Um, right now, it's set to attack damage of eight, uh, which is shown on the hood. It's in the bottom left-hand corner when we're holding the, uh, the mecha tool. But uh, I feel like there's really no reason not to bump that all the way up to 32 here for maximum attack damage. But either way, now that we have those, let's see if we can't make this uh, angel ring here. So in order to make the angel ring, there's a couple of key things that we're going to need. I think the first thing that I'm going to uh, try and make here is a couple of blocks of mana diamond. We need eight of these in total. Um, I did put a little bit of coal into this hopper before the stream. And so our mana pool has a little bit of mana in it, although there definitely is space for a bit more in here. And I think one of the first things we'll do is we'll see how many blocks of mana diamond we can make using the mana that we have. And then uh, if it's not enough, we can always put even more coal in there, uh, come back later on in the stream, and hopefully we'll have enough mana to uh, get as many as we need. We're actually very close. We've got seven out of the eight there we need there. So presumably, if we just go ahead and fill up this hopper here with coal, when we come back, this should have more than enough mana to craft that last mana diamond, and we should be pretty much good to go. So now that that's taken care of, um, one of the biggest or hardest things for us to get, surprisingly, was a Minecraft feather. Now, for those watching on YouTube, between this episode and last episode, there was another live stream in which I spent two hours trying to get a chicken to spawn. We did this in a couple of different ways. The mod pack recommends setting up a mob spawner, like we have down here, and then trying to, to kill the mobs in there over and over and over again until you get a zombie jockey to spawn, which is a zombie riding a chicken. Um, we waited for quite some time. We went through quite a lot of mob spawns, and we didn't ever get a zombie chicken to spawn. So um, unfortunately, there was no way of getting a feather using the mob spawner for us, but apparently that is one of the best ways to get it. Um, instead, we set up a grass platform and kind of just waited for mobs to spawn. They didn't spawn. Of course, uh, our main base is in an ocean biome, which is why they didn't spawn there. Over here, this is in a birch forest biome. You can see under the mini-map, it says birch forest. They still didn't spawn here. And so what we did is we went out in search of a plains biome. And if I do a slash back here, you'll see that we have this giant grass platform. And under the mini-map, it does say plains. So basically, all we did, we built the platform. I stood over here. This is uh, 24 blocks away from the platform. And we just waited and waited, and waited, and eventually, a little cluster of, I think, three or four chickens spawned over there. I'll insert the clip uh, for those watching on YouTube. Uh, we killed most of the chickens, but kept one of them. Um, one of them is inside of this mob imprisonment tool, a fairly nifty item. It's made with uh, four plastic and one guest here. This allows you to capture any mob just by right-clicking with the imprisonment tool, and then you can put it down anywhere else you like in the world. So... Thankfully, we do now have two feathers from the chickens that we killed, and we have one chicken in our mob imprisonment tool. And so what we should be able to do is if we go with a very rudimentary setup and we maybe get some iron bars and a hopper, we can potentially just lock this chicken into a, a little area. And I feel like we might as well get a chest as well. And over time, that chicken will, of course, produce eggs. The idea is that if we keep the chicken in one place, we can collect those eggs and later on down the line, if we need more chickens, uh, we can just throw the eggs at the ground, hopefully spawn in some more chickens, and use those to get even more feathers. The Twitch chat has pointed out that we do have name tags in our spawner here. And so whilst you don't need to use a name tag on a chicken to keep it uh, spawned in, we can always go ahead and give it a name just because it's our one and only chicken here. All right, so he is named and he is going to produce eggs going forward. Thankfully, we don't need those eggs for the angel ring uh, because the angel ring only requires two feathers and we have those two feathers ready to go. So let's throw those in the system. What else do we need um, for this? We need four elytras. Uh, to do that, we are going to have to go through to the end. And for that, we're going to have to get end kick. So I'll go ahead and bookmark that. Thankfully, not too difficult to make. We also need eight gold plates, which should be fairly easy for us. Right now, we don't have those automated and given that i don't think we're going to need any more golden plates going forward i really don't think there's much of a point in automating them we can just put those uh, ingots into that hopper there and they will get pumped back around into our system for later crafting we do need four of these advanced components here which as luck would have it we already have i guess i made too many of them when i was making the uh, advanced crafting tables 
And so that should be pretty much everything. Oh, apart from the luminescence blocks, which are just made with nine luminescence. We'll take four of those. Uh, so that's everything for the angel ring, apart from the diamond ring. The diamond ring requires those aforementioned blocks of mana diamond, along with eight star metal ingots, two armored jetpacks, two emerald jetpacks, and an ender star block. So the armored jetpacks are actually fairly easy to make here. The non-armored variant, which you do have to make first, is made with two steel, three tin, one basic control circuit, and a basic chemical tank. So I'll make two of those. And then to make those into the armored variant, we need bronze, a block of steel, and then two diamond dust. So diamond dust, I'm fairly certain we can get by taking our diamonds here and throwing those into the crusher. Uh, we should have a crusher over here. We do. And we can probably go ahead and get rid of the uh, sugarcane export because I don't think we're going to need more than 180-ish HDPE sheets which is what we'll have once we've got all of these uh, HDPE pellets processed. And once we have four diamond dust, that should be pretty much everything for two armored jetpacks. Nice. As for the emerald jetpack, this is also probably not going to be too difficult for us to make. And what we'll probably do here is we'll take our current steel jetpack, which is tier three. We do have to upgrade that to a diamond jetpack first. Well, either diamond or platinum. I think we're going to go with uh, diamond here because we don't have, I don't think, any platinum at the moment. But uh, we are going to have to make a few of these. And I'm fairly certain we're going to have all the resources required to make this. Although I do have a feeling that this is going to be a fairly tedious craft just due to the number of tiers we have to go through, especially for the second Emerald Jetpack when we have to start right from the beginning. One and two. And that should be a diamond jetpack if we put in this and then for the emerald jetpack um it's basically more of the same we need some of these uh ultimate coils yeah ultimate coils we can use those to craft up the emerald energy cell we need three of those actually i guess we need six because we need one for the other jetpack we're going to make uh, and then two emerald thrusters along with uh, two more cells emerald capacitor boom and boom so this is the highest tier of jetpack that you can get. It holds 48 million redstone flux. Um, I don't know if it's too much faster than the previous one. We are currently throttled, by the way, at 80%, so we can uh, bump that up to 100%. So in terms of flying around, I think it might be a little bit faster, but uh, the main benefit of having the uh, highest tier of jetpack, the Emerald jetpack, is that uh, if we look at the stats here, the hover speed is zero. Our previous hover speed with the steel jetpack was 0.025, which meant that slowly but surely we would fall if we were using the jetpack, if we were hovering like this. With the Emerald jetpack, you can hover perfectly. We're not falling at all. We're perfectly stationary, and we can hold this for as long as we have power in the jetpack, which should be almost forever uh, because we are wirelessly receiving power from our induction matrix. But uh, now, chat, we've got to go ahead and make another one of these. And not too long later, we have a second Emerald jetpack. And so if we take a look again at this angel ring recipe, we're almost there. The only things we're missing now for the diamond ring are the star metal ingots and the ender star block. So the ender star block is an interesting one. This is made in the ender crafter and the ender crafter uses ender alternators to complete the craft. The ender alternators don't require any power, but the more of these you have, the faster the craft will go. So let's have a look here. Ender crafter. To make this, we need five ender ingots, which are just made with uh, ender pearls and iron. I'm going to go ahead and make like two stacks of these because I know we're going to need them uh, quite a bit. Uh, we also need a crafting table, nice and easy, and three eyes of ender. Again, we'll go ahead and make like a stack of those uh, and we'll also get even more blaze powder just in case we need some more of those in the future. We do have uh, like 90,000, oh sorry, 30,000. So that is not going to be a problem. Uh, we'll get even more just in case. Let's make the ender crafter. And then in terms of the ender alternators these are made in basically the exact same way they're made with ender ingots and eyes of ender let's go ahead and make quite a few of these again the more of these you have the faster the recipe will go but of course you do have to have space to uh, to put them all down and then we need 72 ender stars which is 72 nether stars and then like 300 eyes of ender thankfully we have 138,000 nether stars and in terms of Eyes of Ender, um, we currently don't have 300. However, we should be able to make those fairly easily. 
Oh, I'm a fool. Chat has pointed out, thankfully, that I am a fool. <laughs> we don't need 72 of these Ender Star blocks. We need nine Ender Stars. I'm actually, I'm, I, apologies. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 36. That's actually all we need. For, I don't know why I thought we needed so many of those. Thank you, chat. Either way, um, essentially, all we have to do here is put down the Ender Crafter, like so. Um, and I will put down that torch again somewhere close by, just because I don't want any mobs spawning and ruining my day here. We can then put in the Nether Star and the Eyes of Ender, like so. Uh, if we put down one Ender Alternator, the craft will begin, albeit very, very slowly. So what we can do, of course, is we can put down even more of these. Um, I think you can go up to, I think three blocks out. I think you can build like a seven by seven cube. That might've changed in newer versions um, of this mod. But I think it used to be like this, and you can build them up here as well, like these ones do count. Uh, so I think you can go up to three out in each direction to make a giant seven by seven uh, cube if you like. Uh, given that we only have 32 of these, I feel like it makes a little bit more sense just to do something like this and try and make it look somewhat symmetrical outside of that torch block there. Uh, but now those should be going hopefully a little bit faster. Although they are still going fairly slowly. That is fine, though, because we can, of course, come back to that uh, once we have uh, defeated the End Dragon. So for that, we need the End Cake, which is yet more Eyes of Ender with two End Crystals and Regular Cake. Regular Cake, we can make the old-fashioned way. That does require eggs. Um, as luck would have it, we currently have four eggs. We don't have a cow, though, so I don't think that's going to be a viable option for us. Thankfully, we can make cake in the Solidification Chamber using two eggs, one wheat, and honey. So thankfully, we don't need the milk here, um, which is beautiful. It means we don't have to go and find some cows. So all we need is a little bit of wheat, which we do have, and we could grow more if we wanted to as well. Um, and then we need just some cyclic honey in the solidification chamber. And I believe that we already have cyclic honey, of course, in this solidification chamber over here. Uh, let's do egg, egg, and wheat. The cake should then be in the item cable. It is beautiful. We'll take that out. Drop that back down. And I think we're good to go here. Let's add to extract again, just for future use. But uh, back over here, that should be pretty much everything for the end cake. Uh, we do need the end crystals. Let's make two of those for the end cake. Although, given that we are playing on a server, it's highly likely that people have already fought and killed the end dragon. So we should take four end crystals so that we can resummon the end dragon. So let's put that down, I guess like over here for now. Sure. Uh, we'll also put away a lot of this stuff. We'll keep the uh, the jetpack that we're wearing, of course, so we can make the, uh, the dragon fight hopefully a little easier. But uh, if we right click here, people have been, uh, have been building by the looks of it. Hello, everybody. This teleporter will take us to an enderman farm. That is very nice of them. Uh, thankfully, we don't need an Enderman farm, although we do get speed, strength, resistance, and, gen and regeneration, which is very nice indeed. Very happy to see that. Um, I am a fool, though, because I put my end crystals back. Let's make sure we have those. And let's try that again, shall we? So to resummon the dragon, we can put the end crystals, I believe, here, 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 and here. Now, I believe the way that the armor that we have works is that so long as there is power in the armor we're not going to take damage so i think we can actually get right up close and as soon as the dragon is back in of course we can just break these because what will happen is we'll take a large amount of damage but that damage instead of hurting us will just be taken off as power and then because our flux network can recharge our weaponry across dimensions it will instantly begin refilling the power of our armor and so really that we should be able to do this fairly easily now um there is obviously a slight problem and that is that we are wearing a jetpack and not our full armor which means we do take a little bit more damage but uh one thing we can do if we want to cheese it a little bit here is we can go put the uh chest plate on take it off put the jetpack on fly to the next spot and then repeat the process over and over again until we have all of these gone And then once all of those are gone, let's see how strong our tool actually is here. It's not crazy strong, even with a damage of um, of 32. And there we go. The end dragon is defeated. Not quite sure why, but for whatever reason, the, uh, the mecha tool 
wasn't dealing that much damage. It definitely wasn't dealing 32 damage. Um, we ended up using the uh, Sentient Sword here for most of our damage. This was doing significantly more damage than the Mecha Tool. Either way, uh, the End Dragon is now uh, defeated. Again, we didn't really have to fight the End Dragon um, because we don't need the Dragon Egg. So now we just have to find four Elytras, which might be easier said than done. Let's grab some uh, Ender Pearls. Head back through to the nether. And then uh, all we really have to do now is uh, throw these through the portals. And then look for some end chips. So there's Elytra number one. Surprisingly, the uh, mecha tool here does seem to be doing its damage to the shulkers. These guys die very quickly. And that's uh, Elytra number two. Uh, in fact, it should be Elytra number three. We got a dragon scale here for beating the dragon, and that creates a duplicate. So that's three Elytras. So we just need one more here. And number four. Nice. So now, back at home, I think we are pretty much good to go here, right? Um, we've got everything here that we need. Let's go ahead and grab everything out of the uh, system because we do need this um, actually in the advanced crafting table. So we'll take the feathers, we'll take the gold plates, we'll take the blocks of luminescence. Uh, what else do we need here? We need the advanced components. And then for the angel ring, we need the jetpacks, all four of them. Obviously, we're wearing one of them, but we'll take the other ones out of the system. Um, we need the ender star block, which should be over here. It is. All those stars are done beautiful. And also, let's not forget that right at the start of the stream, we did... Uh, generate some blocks of mana diamond. Let's go and get one more of those. I don't remember putting this here, but uh, apparently I did. That's fine. We'll also grab the rest of the mana diamonds out of here as well. And at that point, I think the only thing we're missing are the eight star metal ingots. Yeah, so for the eight star metal ingots, we need eight star metal ore. Uh, star metal ore you can get by transmuting iron ore using starlight. So if we take this uh, collector crystal, and we take some iron ore, which thankfully we do have. We get this from uh, the sifting that we did right at the start of the playthrough. We can then use our linking tool. And what we should be able to do fairly easily is drop down the crystal. Really anywhere will do. We'll put it like right here. And then if we link that crystal by right clicking it and then right clicking on the iron ore, that's going to turn it into star metal ore. And then if we do that a few more times here, we should get enough star metal ore to produce eight Star Metal Ingots. Boom. Boom. And let's head on downstairs. I think that's everything. We, of course, do need to craft up the actual Ender Star block here. Beautiful. But let's see. Do we have everything for the Diamond Ring? Unfortunately, there's no shift click here, so we are going to have to do this manually. Uh, thankfully, it doesn't seem like too difficult of a recipe. I don't think it should matter that our jetpacks are full there. That should be fine. Uh, I think it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There is the diamond ring. Uh, because this is the auto crafting table, we could wait for it or we could just take it. And then for the actual angel ring itself, we need the four elytras. Those are surrounded by the advanced components. We then have the luminescence blocks here, 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 and here. We have the eight gold plates, I believe in the same place as the mana diamonds. And then at the top, we have two feathers, one and two. And boom, we have the angel ring, um, which, as chat pointed out, we can put into the angel ring slot. Uh, let me check. Can you put it into a regular ring slot? You can't. So it does have to go uh, into the angel ring slot, not the regular ring slot. And now, chat, we have full creative mode flight, which is actually surprisingly a little bit slower in terms of like the uh, horizontal speed, like the speed at which we can travel in this direction. Um, but we don't have to worry about charging it. We can use our mecha suit body armor all of the time, and much like with the Emerald Jetpack, we don't have to hover, we can just stay up all the time. Um, I don't have to toggle the Jetpack on and off using the V key anymore. We just have infinite creative flight whenever we want it. So I think the last thing, chat, and I've got to get used to actually using it now because I went to hit uh, V there to turn on my Jetpack and it didn't work. So it's going to take a little getting used to, but what I want to work on now before we ramp up today's stream is I would like to make our first compressor. And this is really uh, the first like the beginning of the end of this mod pack, I think. So the compressor here is what is going to allow us, and we do need, I guess, eight of these, 
but it's what's going to allow us to begin making singularities out of all the resources that we have. And then from there, we could, of course, look at making the ultimate singularities, um, which are used to make things like the creative vending upgrade, the creative energy cube, and the everlasting pool of gluttony, which is a creative uh, mana pool. Um, so these guys right here, the ultimate singularities, we do need quite a few of them. Each one of these is made from 17 individual singularities, those being aluminum, bronze, coal, copper, diamond, electrum, emerald, glowstone, iron, uranium, tin, steel, silver, redstone, nickel, lead, and lapis. We need all of these per ultimate singularity. So for example, if we're gonna make the creative vending upgrade, this needs 24 ultimate singularities, which means that we need 24 of each of these singularities. Each of these singularities here is made in the quantum compressor using 10,000 of that resource, which means if my calculations are correct, we need 240,000 of every single one of these resources if we're going to make 24 ultimate singularities, thus giving us the creative vending upgrade. This is not to be confused with the creative storage upgrade. The creative storage upgrade gives you infinite storage. The creative vending upgrade gives you unlimited item withdrawal. So as soon as you have a creative vending upgrade, you have infinite of every single item that you could like. Like any item you want, you can make infinite of. The first thing you can do is you can make infinite creative vending upgrades. And then if we wanted to, we could put those creative vending upgrades um, onto all of our pre-existing storage drawers. And then we'd have infinite of all of the items that we have in here. So the quantum compressor here, of course, is how we make all of this happen. Uh, let's grab a flux point, start and start. We can then take that flux point And for now, we'll put this here. We'll probably end up making more quantum compressors. We should probably make 17 quantum compressors, one for each uh, of the singularities we're going to make. But uh, essentially, we drop that down. We can select our network. And then uh, if we wanted to, this is going to be real janky because this is a very uh, temporary setup. But of course, one thing we could do here is we could get an exporter just as soon as we request a construction core. We could then grab some cable and... Hopefully that call is going to be somewhat quick. There we go. And that exporter. And then, you know, we could do something like this. Make sure this is hooked up to our system. And then if we were to grab, say, some redstone and put that in here, that should begin exporting the redstone. And slowly but surely, that should begin, if we unlock the limit there, that should begin producing the singularity. You do need to be careful, though, because if you just pump them in normally, uh, nothing will happen. They do need the catalyst. So for this one, we do need the ultimate catalyst um, in order for this to work. Uh, the ultimate catalyst being made with black iron slates, luminescence, and emeralds. Uh, we'll take four of those, and then we can upgrade that into the ultimate catalyst like so. Drop that in over on the left-hand side here. And then if we go ahead and unlock that, now once we get to 10,000 redstone, this will make a singularity. As we've done before, we could take some speed upgrades to make this faster. We could just put four speed upgrades in, and that would be fast. However, what is even faster than that is if we get a stack upgrade. The stack upgrade is four speed upgrades and five sugar, and this allows the exporter to move a stack of items into the assigned inventory at a time. And so if we combine three stack upgrades with, oh, uh, sorry, three speed upgrades with one stack upgrade, that is going to start moving stacks of redstone in very quickly. So right now it's going up one at a time, 80, 81, 82, 83, etc. Um, if we just put in the speed upgrades, it's going in faster, 200, 205, 210. If we put in the stack upgrade, now it's going in crazy faster, 1,000, 1,500, 1, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000. It's going up so much faster. And so for the resources like redstone and diamond, the things that we already have enough of, that we already have 240,000 of, um, we should probably be able to make all of the uh, singularities that we need here. Maybe if I lock this, I'm not quite sure why that's not working. So apparently this does take a while. Once you've hit the 10,000 number, it will uh, do this, like whether the bars kind of, or the arrow here is kind of filling up over and over again. It will do this for a little while, maybe like a minute or so before you actually get the singularity. In the meantime, we can unlock the input here so that it will just keep pumping in um, really as much redstone as it can. Of course, we'd probably want to lock it at about 240,000, but um, you can kind of unlock it to keep, let it keep putting redstone in so that once it's made the first one, it can instantly start making the second one. It doesn't have to wait until uh, it fills up again. It could just keep going, which uh, I guess is good. 
But uh, as you can see, this is going to take a little while, especially if we're going to make 24 of each of the 17 singularities required to make all of the ultimate singularities for the creative vending upgrade. So I'll leave this going here. That's going to make us four redstone singularities. Um, next time we'll come back. I think we'll look at uh, hopefully upgrading our final apiary here to tier four. And then we'll look at uh, efficiently filling all of our apiaries with all of the bees required to get all of these singularities going. Um, again, it is going to take a while. So we'll set that going sooner rather than later so we can work on other things while we wait for this to finish. Um, while we do wait for that to finish, there are a few other things um, that I do want to, uh, to work on. Um, there is a dimension quest over here to get the mining dimension teleporter, this guy right here. And that is something we need to work on just to complete this quest. Um, I would also very much so like to try and set up auto crafting for the infinite disc from refined storage, this one right here. Uh, this is going to be quite the auto craft, but I think we can make this work. So that is definitely uh, one thing I'd like to look at and something I might look at doing uh, in the next stream. And so next time we will come back and I think we might start working on that infinite disc. I might start looking at that. There's also a few of the quests and a few of the quest lines uh, that we might start to uh, to work through, see if we can't complete uh, some of these. We're very close on a lot of these quest lines here to completion. So we can start working towards finishing these uh, quest lines and ultimately finishing the pack. I don't think we're too far away at this point uh, from completing the entirety of the mod pack. For now though, thank you for watching.